Our training camp spotlight is shining on the top three wide receivers from the 2024 NFL Draft class. We're going to discuss what they must do in training camp, how they can establish themselves, and what is their best path to big rookie seasons. We're going to discuss this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast. Cover your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson. You can find and follow me on Twitter, on X, at DP underscore NFL. I'm a senior draft analyst, and thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. You know I got to kick the intro to Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. You talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to start this podcast off by saying shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. Y'all tapping us through the summer months. Guess what? We are here. We are finally into training camp. DP, we have a couple teams opening up. They're getting the guys inside the building. DP, it smells like football, man. We are right there. We are right there. Less than a couple months away from kicking off the NFL season. College football season is right around the corner. So what are we going to talk about? We're putting a spotlight on these rookie wide receivers. We're talking Marvin Harrison Jr. We're talking Malik Neighbors, and we're talking about Romo Dunze. DP, can Caleb Williams, Romo Dunze be the first, I think, 1,000-yard connection since Andy Dalton and A.J. Green. We have a really fun conversation. Yeah, that's that's a stat for you, DP. That's a stat for you. Before we get started with this conversation, man, why don't you hit him with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports aren't sportsing like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus Daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Marvin Harrison Jr., the th- what, third overall pick. No, f- sorry, fourth overall pick of the 2024 NFL draft class. Wide receiver one in the draft cl- class, Keith. And things that I need that I, for me personally, I think Marvin Harrison must do in camp. A number one, get that chemistry down with Kyler Murray, right? You know. Anybody that studied Marvin Harrison in 2023 saw that the quarterback play from C.J. Stroud to Kyle McCord was, quote, unquote, something. Um, (laughs) It was not good. It was tough. So putting it with Kyler Murray, a guy who has succeeded with big body receivers, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green when he was there, like, You've seen him succeed with bigger body receivers. I think, you know, if I remember, if I, if my Did he play a year with six? Did he play a year with Fitz? Yes, Joe? yes, Fitz as well. Yeah. Even going back to college, you know, and granted, I, I think, you know, he's a little bit shorter, but CeeDee Lamb, who plays like a big receiver at mm-hmm. times um, at Oklahoma, I, I just think that what you what you want to see is those two get on the same page. They're working out, you know, right before training camp and everything, you know, on their own. I'm expecting that. But I want to see Mar. I, crazy enough, I want him to go out there and I want to hear reports of him being dominant in coverage, in, in, in on passing plays. I'm going to tell you why I say that, Keith. And, guys, because of the fact that unlike some teams, the Arizona Cardinals don't have a veteran bona fide cornerback one, right? It's not like getting drafted to the Saints and as a rookie, you got to line up in one-on-ones against Marshawn Lattimore, right? Or you go to the Cowboys, you got to line up against Trayvon Diggs, right? Or the Jets. You know what I mean? You got to line up. Malachi Corley at some point is going to have to face Sauce Gardner in one-on-ones during training camp practice. That's a tough task. That's a tough and tall task to overcome. They don't have one of those guys right now in Arizona. They have a lot of young guys and a group. I want to see. I want to hear that he's being dominant in camp in those one-on-one opportunities because outside of uh, Max Melton, I, like he has experience against Marv, but I don't think any of those other guys – have seen a talent like Marv, especially in college when they were coming out. So I want to see him get that chemistry down with Kyler Murray, but I want him to be dominant. Kind of, not, not, I ain't gonna say right out the gate, but be dominant early in in this process because there's not enough corn. That's not enough cornerback talent or proven talent that should limit him at all in this in this defense on this defense. 
Yeah, I mean, and and that's the part where he just has to simply set the tone, right? And the optimism for, I wouldn't say the entire Cardinals team, but just especially offensively, is is surrounded around Marvin Harrison Jr. Right, it's getting Kyler Murray back and then pairing him with this young guy. And the narrative is that they're going to have this duo for the next ten years, right? Kyler Murray plays well, Marvin Harrison Jr. plays well, and you have this duo for the next ten years, which it's it's been since I think. Kurt Warner, maybe it was Kurt Warner, Colson Palmer ish, and in that tandem with um Larry Fitzgerald, and, and they just need an offensive identity, right? And if Marvin Harrison Jr. can be everything that he was is expected to be, it puts the Cardinals in a very good situation. DP, I'm, I'm while you were talking, I was also looking up the depth chart, and you talked about Marvin Harrison Jr., then you go. You know, Michael Wilson, Zay Jones, Greg Dortch, Zach Pascal, Chris Moore. So I read off the rest of those names. Very optimistic about Michael Wilson, right? I, I know you like him. You did the film yeah. break on the draft network. Um, but then you get into the Zay Jones, Pascal, Greg Dortch situation, and you're like, you know what? It, it highlights the fact that you need him to show up, right? Like you, you need Marvin Harrison Jr. to be a bona fide one. So he he has to of of all the rookies, DP, and we've even talked about the quarterbacks yesterday. He might has more more onus on himself to show and prove. Maybe even some of the young rookie quarterbacks that we talked about yesterday, because so much of this this offensive um, identity and ability to move it forward is going to hinge on him and what Kyler Murray offers as far as being a scrambling quarterback. That's the things you want to see, right? Is like how do they convert the big plays, and then when Kyler gives you these one on one opportunities, being able to show up. Hundred percent, and I think also look when you, especially when you factor in with Trey McBride and the big step he took last year. Now, if Marvin Harrison's, he's gained rhythm, he's gaining steam, and defensively, Keaton, I ask you, you walk into the game plan. All right, I got this baller at tight end. I got this baller rookie wide receiver. Who are you telling the defense to take away? Because if you, because think about it, right? If Marvin Harrison's cooking and he starts getting doubled. That gives Trey McBride one-on-one opportunities mm -hmm. where he feasted yep. on last year. Yep. No, I, I agree with you. And that and that and that's probably going to be the key piece. I want to ask you, too, just things that he must do. Do you think it's important that Marvin Harrison Jr. plays multiple positions, or does he need to solidify himself as the X, Y receiver, or are you looking at him as a movement piece? Like, what, 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 uh, like I guess, what position or how much does he need to bite off in training camp to put himself in a good situation entering the season and then projecting to be a good player in the season. Man, I, I would like to see him, you know, we saw him at, at Ohio State, at, especially at times it wasn't as robust as like a neighbors moving around a lot, but we mm -hmm. saw uh, Ryan Day move Mar from the X to the Z to the slot, right, in motion, different stuff like that, which is you would think would be more prevalent with an elite talent like that. Let's get the defense off kilter and off on their heels. Like we can't just sit on one side of the field and double team him. We got him in motion. We got him lined up all these different places. I want that in this Arizona Cardinals offense, especially when you factor in Michael Wilson, who's a big body receiver himself. He can play the Z where you can throw Marv on the opposite side or play the X and you can throw Marv at the Z. You can move Marv into the slot. You know what I mean? If you bring a Zay Jones onto the field and now you got uh, Michael Wilson at the X, Zay Jones at the Z, Marv in the slot with a two-way go. And I've, listen, that's a def that's a different that's a difficult task, a difficult cover to handle that dude who runs as greater routes as anybody at that size and strength and speed with a two-way go in the slot. Like it's very hard to to handle that. So I would love for him to handle to to handle multiple wide receiver spots because all that does is create mismatches. Where think about a five-nine, you know, you playing. I think it's the is he with the Steelers now? Either way, Mike Hilton, one of the better slot corners in the league, right? Mm -hmm. He's like five-nine. Well, guess what? As good as he is, I'm taking that opportunity to throw that ball to Marv if he's lined up one on one because Marv can post him up and play big boy ball in the paint and put that body on him and box him out at the catch point. Right. I can do those type of things. Think back to Brandon Marshall. I think you used that that comp for Keon Coleman. But I remember Brandon Marshall. When he got to the Bears. They moved him around so much. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which game it was, but he torched somebody simply from the slot. And they put him up, it might have been the Niners, I can't remember. But they had him against a small nickel corner. And I was like, this is barbecue chicken for four <laughs> quarters. And they never adjusted. And he cooked them. So I think that's the type of stuff I would like to see from Marv as well.
Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with DP. Let's keep this thing going and flowing. And where are we going to next? We're going up north to New York, the New York Giants. And we're going to talk about Mr. LSU himself, man, Malik Neighbors. What can he do? What does he need to do? Um, We know this offense is, is, is up in the air, right, as far as what it's going to be. Saquon Barkley is not there. We've seen that via HBO, right? Hard knock, Saquon is not there. So we have to talk about Malik Neighbors being the number one playmaker. What does he do as a rookie entering training camp? Coming up next. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're look if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Malik Neighbors must establish himself as wide receiver one, wide receiver one, right at the gate, in my opinion, Keith. I need them to funnel these passing game through him immediately. Because with the loss of Darren Waller, who is your best weapon, truthfully, most mm -hmm. talented weapon, losing him, I do like Darius Slayton. We like Wandale Robinson. Um, I predicted a dark shot breakout candidate, uh, Jalen Hyatt. Um, that Keith wasn't buying, but it was all right. <laughs> so, like, they have some some pieces there, but what they need is that true that that dog, that number one guy. You saw, I remember talking to you after the LSU pro day, and you was like, DP, he's a dog. Like, you can see it in his eyes. You can see the look. I've been around dogs. I've been at this facility and seen know what dogs look like. That's a dog. They need him to come out there, Keith, and just establish himself that I'm the guy. Give me the ball and let me work because similar to Marvin Harrison pulling coverage and making things easier, Malik Neighbors can do the exact same thing. And I think I said this after the, after they drafted them. If you're going to roll with Daniel Jones, if you are going to roll with Daniel Jones, which clearly they are, right? God bless, but there are. They are they're doing it. You got to give them some easy throws. And if there's any receiver in this draft that was going to make life easy on Daniel Jones just as a player – I think it's I think it's Malik Neighbors. Um, so I agree, DP. But how I feel is how I always feel when it comes down to this giant situation, right? There's a lot of trepidation, and we're talking about <laughs> what, what does Malik Neighbors do to, I guess, to carve out a path for himself in regards to being productive. What is he doing in training camp? I mean, in training camp, you win your one on ones, right? That that's what yeah. you do. Um, in training camp, you learn the plays, right? And then after that. Who knows, DP? What I want Malik Neighbors to do is just to simply do his job, right? Run his routes, get open. But I think what's been so fun is just watching, you know, some of these HBO shows and things like that in regard to the draft is highlighting the wide receiver position. And then, like we talked about Devontae Adams, right? You can do everything you need to do. You can draw up the play your own self. And if the quarterback can't get you the football, then it doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, it just simply doesn't matter. So I want to sit there. You talk about Malik Neighbors establishing himself. I think what he needs to do, how he establishes himself is that he's the hard, hardest work in the building. And I talked about the one-on-ones. And he established himself as, you know what, they drafted a dog, right? And he can't, he can't put himself into basing his impact and how people feel about him based on his production, right? It's, it's, he's going to really have to block out the noise because – Based on his situation, you know, Jalen Hyatt, we talked about Wandale Robinson, right? We talked about Darius Sleep. It's just, it doesn't appear that it's like, I don't foresee, because even the very best versions of Daniel Jones, we talked about it time and time again on this podcast, was a guy, I think, that threw 17 touchdowns or something like that, right? It was, it was oh less God. than 20. So I can't, I, I don't know how I expect 
to roll into the 2024 NFL season and expect Daniel Jones to throw for 30-something touchdowns and Malik Neighbors is able to get 12 of those, right, or get 10 of those touchdowns. So I think he can't put himself in a position to, to judge himself based on production, but it's – Am I doing a little thing, little, little things right? Right. Am I beating press man? Am I understanding defensive backs leverages correctly? Right. Am I, you know, doing the right side adjustments if I have option routes? Things like that. Am I knowing all, you know, all three, four positions on the field? Thing, things of that nature is what Malik neighbors, um, what he can do to establish himself. I know you talked about the quick passes. What, what, but what I'll find interesting, DP, is that, and you can throw quick screens out of the slot. Right. Or maybe you can throw bubble screens. But I know that and this goes into tendencies and football and all those type of things. Right. Like you see most of the quick screens, they'll go to that outside wide receiver. Right. They'll go to the number, you know, go to that number one wide receiver. But Malik Neighbors is a slot guy. So how yeah. do you get him those simple throws and put the ball in his hands to those quick run after the catch, run after the catch opportunities? I think that'll be interesting just to see what they do from an alignment perspective. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised, Keith, if teams play man-to-man -man coverage against them and say Daniel Jones throw it into a tight, tight window, yeah, right? Of course. But that's and that's when I look at Brian Dayball, I was like, well, you know what's a man beater mesh concept. And that's mm -hmm. a quick way to get the ball. Cause then you get not only getting the ball out of Daniel Jones' hands to Malik neighbors, you're getting it to him on the run. So like he's 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 streaming on that shallow cross, he gets open because the the two crosses, for those who don't know what mesh is, the two crosses kind of run into each other parallel. Now your defender, you know, Malik Neighbors defender gets picked off coming through the traffic. Now he's coming out of that out of that traffic zone free. You get that ball to him on the run. Now that explosiveness takes over. And now you're talking about yards after the catch. You want to get him quick slants, whip routes, things of that nature. I don't think you're going to be able to get uh, NFL defenses with all those slot fades and slot posts that they ran so much at LSU getting them up on safeties and stuff like that. I don't think NFL defenses are going to let that happen. They're like, nah, we got nickel corners that we're going to absolutely put you in man-to-man -man situation. Yep. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to deploy and that. And the, the other problem is this, is that y'all have to show us that y'all can run the football, right? Because why don't yes. we come out, like you said, instead of a, a, a extra safety, we come out with an extra corner, right? Just to stop extra that corner. slot fade, y'all going to have to establish yourselves and show us that y'all can run the football without Saquon Barkley. That's going to yeah. be the thing, right? Saquon in there, you're like, you know what? We need a heavier defender, right? We need a heavier box defender. We need a nickel mm -hmm. that can tackle things like that. But without any Saquon, who knows, right? So all Putting of these – the coverage guys on the field. Yeah, you could. You They have to show that they can run the football, which would be very interesting, DP. And so I'm just looking at this situation, and I have to think, like I said, Malik Neighbors, it, I don't think he judges himself based on a production. It's more so, is he doing his job correctly? Is he getting to the right spots? Is he seeing a play? Is he learning multiple positions? I'm, I'm interested, too, especially once we get to camp and the, the pads get put on. Those one-on-ones, like I, I just talked about it with, with Marv, right? He doesn't have that bona fide guy where you're like, man, this is a top-tier corner right now they got some young guys with the potential but we got to see that potential become proven production Deontay Banks was one of the best corners yep. in the 2023 NFL draft class right and he played good ball for the most part as a rookie and with him having another year under his belt another offseason under his belt I expect this young man to get even better those one-on-ones between him and neighbors are going to be must see be TV fun. right well, what was it? Tio, does it get your popcorn ready? Like that's yep. if I'm if I'm a beat writer and I'm at those practices, oh yeah, I'm recording every single one of those one-on-ones because that should be a lot of fun to watch. No, I agree with you 100. percent You know what that just made me think about was that Malik is a slot dominant player, right? That's that's something I talked about mm -hmm. in this scouting report. That's something we talked about on this podcast. So I think a big win for Malik Neighbors would be becoming more nuanced and detailed, winning on the outside. If he if he can get through training camp and becomes a better outside receiver, because we watched those games against uh, Kool Aid McKinstry, right? And Kool Aid battled him on the outside, right? Was there a foot, uh, foot, foot, was there Renato Green from Florida Ren State? Renato Green from Florida State was another one. And you're talking about two guys that went in the second round. Both both guys went in the second round of this past yep. draft. So him just winning on the outside, I think Deontay Banks would definitely um, challenge him, and I think that's probably a big challenge for him. So like I said, man, let's not tie his success into the numbers because we know the situation. Situation, but his ability to grasp grasp the offense, adjust to the learning curve, 
get better in multiple positions and then continue to develop from there. But DP, I think we might, we saved the best for last, right? Because this problem, this may be the most interesting part of this. We talk about Romo Dunze, right? What is his path to a big season? He has Keenan Allen there. He has DJ Moore there, right? And then he also has rookie quarterback Caleb Williams that we're going to discuss. What is Romo Dunze's path to a big season this upcoming year? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus Daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. And guys, if you want to get in on the college football and NFL preseason betting odds, you can do that on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. MVP, national championship odds, college football odds, Heisman odds, all of it is on the app that is super easy to use. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer because FanDuel is the official betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. Chicago Bears rookie wide receiver Rome Adunze. His path to having a successful and even big impactful season to me, Keith, is establishing himself as the as the ex receiver. Because when you look at that receiver core with Keenan Allen, he plays mostly in the slot. DJ Moore is more so and truthfully a Z receiver than a true X. Even though he did have a lot of success out there last year, he's more so the Z receiver. Mm -hmm. Rome, going back to Washington, has been that proven, tried and true, big body X receiver. 6'3", 200 plus pounds, speed down the field, right? Deep speed, ball skills, physicality at the catch point. And I think when you when you factor in the guy we talked about a couple, couple of episodes ago, his quarterback, Caleb Williams, the deep shot. Right. And I expect this team to try and get the run game going with Shane Waldron. You get some play action passes going. That's the guy you want to get the, the big explosive play down the sideline. Cause if you get that one on one, that's the guy you want to try and get, whether it's the back shoulder fade, 50 50 ball, or just the deep ball in general. I think for, for Rome, his path to success is going to be establishing himself as that team's number one X receiver, that traditional receiver on the outside. Because we saw it with Keenan Allen, he was the slot while who? Mike Williams was the X, right? And I think that's where if you if he can do that, that puts to me, puts all three wide receivers in their proper spots to succeed. Yeah, also because I know Rome also played slot, right? So we're talking yeah, about played, his yeah. path to a big season. Do you think this so do you think this kind of backfires for Rome in the sense of the fact of that there's it's it's great for Caleb. It's great for the Chicago Bears. For but Roma Dunes, you're talking about him as a draft prospect into being a rookie. Do you think this backfires him because it makes him so specific in what he can do, and it's not allowing him to tap into playing some of the slot like he did at Washington? A little bit. That's why there's a lot of trepidation right now from just especially fantasy football players. Are like, man, I would love to draft Rome this year, or, you know, and expect a big season. But it's it's, like, it's, man, it's Rome a lot of the talent there. versus Rome the situation, right? Like Rome the talent exactly. versus Rome the situation. You know, it's like the, the 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 case of player versus field. It's like, well, the field on his team is talented. You got right. Keenan, DJ, and Cole Komet at the tight end spot that you got to deal with and get targets to. So it's like, all right, how, do, how will this devy up? And I think for him, it's just kind of, Again, both of them coming in as rookies, and we know similar to, to last year with Tank Dell, right? Tank Dell coming in as that Z receiver outside. Nico Collins was the outside guy. You had Dalton Schultz and everything, but Tank Dell was a high target getter and a big playmaker for that offense up until he got hurt. And it's like because of that connection th those two rookies made in OTAs, mini camp, everything else, we talk about it with Josh Downs and, and Anthony Richardson, that trust. And I think that Caleb Williams and Rome – coming into the same class together could help that. But yeah, hundred percent, this is a guy who can move around and play all three positions. And it's like, man, I can't use, I can't create advantageous ma matchups with him because Keenan's going to have to play in the slot. And yeah, you can flip him to the Z and let 
DJ Moore play the X, that's not a problem, but you still can't get those true mismatches of him against a linebacker, him against a safety in the slot, slot, him against a smaller nickel defender. You won't have that opportunity because of the simple fact that Keenan is there. But, Keenan, is there any – do you think there's any chance uh, – what does he need to do in camp, in your opinion, to kind of earn – like to move up the pecking order to where it's like, all right, you talk about targets throughout the mm-hmm. season, and we fast forward. It's like, man, we're looking at the stat sheet at the end of the season. Like, Keenan, like Keenan Allen was like third on the team behind Rome and DJ. What does Rome have to do to kind of leapfrog Keenan Allen on the, on the, not the depth chart, but just kind of the target pecking order? Yeah, I, I don't, DP is, is going to be tough. And that's why I talked about him just specifically playing the X, Y, receiver position. I go back to Caleb's time at SC and his leading wide receiver, because he played with two guys. He played with Taj Washington, who was like 5'8", 155 pounds, right? And then he played with Brendan Rice, right? He had Brendan Rice and he had Jordan Addison. Um, I, and, and of last year when it was just, when Jordan Addison wasn't there, he was in the NFL, but Brendan Rice and Taj Washington was there. He had the more, he had a better connection with, the smaller guy talking about Taj Washington, primarily because he was in a slot, right? And so yeah. it's trying to identify if Caleb is a middle of the field thrower, right? Like if he's going to look in the middle of the field, use that slot wide receiver as that security blanket type football player. And if that's the case, that's why I go back to the target share, right? And putting Rome on the outside. I wonder if that's going to be an interesting dynamic for Rome. And then also you talk about Caleb holding on to the football, right? When you hold on to the football, what usually opens up it's the middle of the field things, right? Is you still looking in the middle of the field those wide receivers because now they have two options. If, Cal- if if Rome is on Caleb's left side, right, and then Caleb scrambles to the right, he's cutting off Rome's side of the football field, right? Now it's just he just has those wide receivers to work with. So I think it's gonna be a very tough situation. And if I had like it, you're talking about path to a big season. It has to be plays called for Rome, right? I, I think that's going to be the thing, and I hope that what it becomes. And this is something that I like what we did at LSU, right, is, is moving wide receivers around. I hope that I like Rome as playing a role as the big X wide receiver, right, but also moving him around just to give different looks. But like we say, that could be potentially – Rome probably has to play the X because Keenan Allen is, like you said, that Zeta slot, right? And yeah. then – but I will hope that they're able to mix and match a couple of different things, and then you still have DJ Moore and trying to – knowing that he's a, a high-level run-after-the-catch guy, and you're trying to get him involved in the quick game. So what I hope is that as the X wide receiver, they don't just solely make him the – um make him like a deep vertical threat, right? Like he's the guy that that, that serves the purpose of taking a, the top off of the defense. Yeah. I hope that's not the case. No, 100%. I think another thing to throw in there is could be a little bit of a wrinkle is the fact that Shane Waldron, run he ran mostly 11 and 12. It depends on how much 12 they're going to run because <laughs> if they go to 12, it's going to be Rome and DJ Moore on the field, and Keenan probably won't be on the field for those 12 because a lot of the run blocking snaps, you want mm-hmm. the bigger bodies out there, things like that. And if they live in 12 more, I think that's going to help his path to success as well because you get to run. I, I, I expect them – this is probably the most competent coaching staff that Bears have had in a while. And I think that offensively with Shane Waldron, we've seen what he did, you know, what he's done in Seattle, whether it was Kenneth Walker and, by himself or Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, even with Geno Smith, he ran the ball. And I think he's going to still run the ball even with Caleb, especially with Caleb as the rookie quarterback, to get him comfortable, right, to get to get Caleb comfortable and then by getting him comfortable, then you get to play action pass going out of 12, things of that nature, whether it's deep shots, deep crossers, over routes, things of that nature. And I think that that could help the success for the potential success for Roma Dunze. But whichever personnel package they run the most, that's going to be kind of telling on where he's going to end up on the target share. Yeah, and I think what could help is even if Rome plays the role as the XY receiver, a lot more like tight and condensed sets, right? Mm-hmm. To where he's it's not just him playing in a phone booth. Like take both of those guys and let them stack each other, right? And then have different release packages. And then because one thing, and we know that this is what Rome thrived at at Washington was 
that deep over, right? That deep over, he can open up that stride and be crossing the field. So I think that could be an interesting situation for Rome. But overall, DP, I'll say this, man. His path to a big season, I feel like playing the X wide receiver, establishing himself as that big body guy, but also moving him around some to, to free him up, to let him and Caleb get that connection. But like we said, man, it's the talent versus the situation. And the Bears put themselves in a really good situation having Rome Dunze, uh Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, the running backs they have, plus Cole Komet. I think if you're a Chicago Bears fan, you're definitely excited. But DP, that wraps up another episode, man, of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to end this podcast by saying shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Football is here. Training camp is here. It's time to get locked and loaded. It's time to rock and roll, man. Listen, I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there is my guy, my co-host, Mr. Damian Parson. You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, man, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day. As tomorrow, we're going to keep this theme going a little bit more. We're going to talk about some of these pass rushers. Jared Verse, Leitu Latu, you know, Mason, Mason Smith, like all these different defensive linemen that we saw drafted in the 2024 NFL draft class. Who are some guys that need to come out and have big training camps for their respective teams? So come and join the conversation again tomorrow on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.